Okay, so now we're going into macroeconomics. So macroeconomics is like the big picture of economics. So it's the entire uh, economy as a whole. So we're not looking at specific industries anymore. We're looking at the whole economy. So we're not going to take a break in this video. Obviously, the video is going to continue. But if you feel like you need a break, I'd encourage you to pause it now and have a bit of a walk around and come back. Um, but I'll just go straight on. So macroeconomics, study of the large scale economy, um, looking at aggregate supply, aggregate demand, and instead of just market specific stuff. So if you remember the circular flow model, amazing. If you didn't do one to echo, don't stress too much. It's very, very straightforward. So this is the old circular flow model. It just has four flows. So there's the household sector and the business sector. The first flow tells us that there are resources that are given to provide, uh, producers. So producers get resources from household sectors. So for example, land, labor, households can provide uh, capital as well. And then in return for those, especially labor, there's income paid to households. So for example, wages, salaries, and so on. Okay, next with that income households go and buy things so they buy things from businesses and that's expenditure paid to sellers again um the business in return for that uh expenditure they go and produce goods and services so they sell products to households so it's like a sort of a cycle so it's like one two three four and it's just the flow of um the flow of income i guess through this model in an economy but there's one flaw with it and that flaw is we don't know if households are actually going to spend all of their money to buy goods and services so they're not going to realistically most households tend to save they tend to pay off things so they don't necessarily spend all of their income in buying goods and services so that gives us this circular flow model so this is what we're going to use in 34 echo so we've got the original one here but flow three the last flow of consumption is a bit different so flow three has leakages and injection so leakages are stuff that is not spent immediately into back into the economy Injections are stuff that is spent into the economy from other places. So let's look at examples. So savings. So that means that it's not money going into the economy. Um, it's not. It's being saved. It's not going directly in. Taxes. So when people pay taxes, they have less to spend. So they don't spend all of it anymore. Imports. So if they buy overseas stuff, they're not going to spend stuff as much on stuff in the local economy. Injection. So these are stuff bringing money into the economy. So investment is an injection. Um, so for example, um, investing in Australian businesses, investing in capital, technology, and so on. Um, government spending, um, that's an injection just because let's say the government gives subsidies, uh, it promotes spending in the economy. Exports, so if people overseas buy Australian goods and services, is money being ejected, so extra money coming in. And this leads us to the aggregate demand equation. So AD equation, that's pretty much C plus I plus G plus X plus A, um, G plus X minus M. Sounds complicated, but it's actually very logical. So don't try to memorize this whole formula, just see where demand is coming from. So from the circular flow model, there's demand coming from consumption. That's this here. Investment, people investing. That's this here. Government demand, so government spending on stuff. That's this here. Exports, so people buying exports coming in here. Minus imports, so um, imports going out of the economy. So that's why the minus M comes into play here. So that leads us to aggregate demand. 
So aggregate demand looks very similar to just the microeconomics demand curve. The only difference is we're looking at the price level. So now, now we're not just looking at prices, we're looking at the price level. And then the quantity supplied is real GDP. It's still downward sloping. Okay, so aggregate supply, um, again, that tells us the total value of all the goods and services that all the producers in Australia are willing and able to supply. So as the, uh, so there's, I guess, two different ways we can look at aggregate supply. Usually it's given like this, the Keynesian one. Um, so Keynesian, it's like as um, the prices go up, supply increases really quickly. Then um, there's like a slowdown. And then as prices go up, um, the quantity or real GDP doesn't increase as much anymore. The reason why it looks like this is because we're starting to reach our productive capacity. So then after a while, even if prices go up even further, we're not actually able to produce as much just because we're reaching productive capacity. So here we're under, our, ooh, let's go back. Here we're under our productive capacity. So let me just use a pen. So we are below productive capacity. Here we are approaching productive capacity and here we are very, very close to productive capacity. Okay, so this is a combination now. We've got aggregate demand and aggregate supply here. So aggregate de supply is in this shape because of reasons I've already outlined earlier. Okay, so now we can see what factors affect aggregate supply and aggregate demand and how they affect the economy as a whole. So for example, um, if we have changes in aggregate demand and aggregate supply, that's gonna affect the growth in the economy. It's gonna affect the prices of the economy. It's gonna affect our employment or the unemployment rate. So because we're looking at supply and demand as a whole, we're not looking at specific industries anymore. This is going to affect the entire economy. So economic growth, so growth in real GDP, prices, so inflation, unemployment, unemployment rates, and so on. So let's talk about what economic growth actually is. So economic growth is all about how real GDP is increasing over time. So are we increasing the amount that we're producing every year? So the only, a great way to increase our economic growth is by shifting the um, demand curve or supply curve. And this way, the shift in both of them will improve our productive capacity, it will increase how much we produce and result in economic growth. Prices, so let's say demand goes up, prices will also go up just because of the same reason. So demand goes up, there's a shortage at the old equilibrium. Um, this causes producers to increase the general level of prices creating a new equilibrium at a higher price and this literally means that there's inflation unemployment so unemployment is all about spare capacity so remember aggregate supply this vertical dotted line is our productive capacity right and until we get to our productive capacity we are going to have spare capacity so this unused capacity that we have is our unemployment